Hello and welcome to Getting Your Money's Worth, a show that focuses on value. I'm Judith West and our guest today is Dr. Betsy McCoy, former Lieutenant Governor of New York and founder and chairman of RID, R-I-D, Reduce Infection Deaths. Right, right. Reduce Infection, infection Deaths. Death. Okay. All right. Well, that's a mouthful. But anyway, thanks and welcome for being to the show. Um, a little background. Reduce Infection Death is talking about hospital deaths. That's right. Correct. Hospital infection deaths. Believe it or not, Judith, these infections that patients contract once they're in the hospital kill more people in our country than all the car accidents plus all the cases of breast cancer, plus all the cases of AIDS combined, over 100,000 oh, deaths a year. Un that's unbelievable. It's the fourth largest cause of death in the United States, right after heart disease, cancer, and stroke. And Betsy, I want to be sure that I'm saying this right, so you correct me. Now, these are deaths that mostly didn't have to happen. Exactly. These are preventable deaths. What causes these hospital infections? Unclean hands, inadequately cleaned equipment, and lax procedures in hospitals. Okay, so let's They're go. at least ninety percent yeah. preventable. Okay, so let's go. Let's go one by one. But for for a little bit of background, um, you tell tell us briefly how you got into this because well, I know this is the cause that's dear to your heart. Very dear to my heart. <laughs> Uh, when I was Lieutenant Governor of New York State, people came to me with many kinds of health problems. That's always been my field. But increasingly, it was the same terrible story. Someone who had brought their mother or child or spouse to the hospital, often for routine care, to have a baby, the happiest reason of all, to get a repair of the knee or the shoulder or the hip, or for another kind of surgery, and the patient contracted a deadly infection in the hospital. hospital. One woman came to me and said her son was out back and playing and he injured his head. She rushed him to the emergency room. He survived the swelling of the brain, the trauma, and then died from an infection he caught in the hospital. Right. It's almost like you, 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 you walk in and you carry it out. Well, often sadly, that is the case. Sadly. In fact, one woman, Maureen Daly, who still works with RID, she's coordinator of all our volunteers now, she brought her 64-year-old mother, very hardy woman, to the hospital for a minor shoulder repair. Her, her mother had slipped and fallen uh, during a gala dinner at a restaurant. Right? So she brought her to the hospital in New York City, a major academic hospital, for a minor shoulder repair. They expected her to be home in a day or two. Her body was so ravaged by infection during this hospital stay that they wheeled her out four weeks later on a ventilator and a feeding tube, and she died a few weeks after that. So, so it's, it's, ter it's, it's, it's terribly, tragic. terribly okay. common. Gonna, That's the problem. That's the problem. Okay, so having set, having set the stage now, um, this this show is called Getting Your Money's Worth, uh, and um, you're going to tell um, folks how they can get their money's worth out of their hospital stay by walking out. First alive. off, alive, and first off, the the treatment of these um, infections runs up the the hospital bill. Oh. I mean, the, the amount of we spend on healthcare dramatically doesn't That's it? That's right. That's right. In fact, these these infections number in the millions every year, and for every two million hospital infections, it adds about thirty and a half billion dollars to the nation's health tab just in direct added hospital costs alone. Because when a patient contracts an infection, the patient often has to spend weeks extra in the hospital and go through repeated operations to have the infected tissue cut out. So $30.5 billion for every 2 million infections, that's enough to pay for for drugs for all the seniors in the United I States. Know. It's an enormous amount of and money, we, and it's an avoidable uh, cost. And we already have a, a, such a bloated health care industry anyway. Well, one of the reasons that RID is so welcome in hospitals is that hospitals can actually be much more profitable when they prevent infection. When I first went to the hospitals instead, I'd like, and said, I'd like to show you how to prevent these infections, they were busy. But when I came back and said, I can show you not only how to save lives, but actually how to make your own bottom line performance better. The doors opened wide. They had plenty of ears for you. Yes, and now the pressure on hospitals to improve is even greater for three reasons. One is Medicare, which is the federal health program for seniors, 
announced last October that it will no longer reimburse hospitals for the added cost of treating the infection the patient got in the hospital. So this means that every infection is a huge financial loss for the hospital. Well, that's good news. Yes. That's what I we think they call those. very yeah. hard to get that yeah. done. They call, you call those never events. That's right. It's one of the never events that Medicare will no longer pay for. Okay. Secondly, 25 states, including New York, will now be publishing each hospital's infection rate. Well, that's a terrific... That's right. We had to work very hard in state legislatures all over the country to get those laws passed to make hospital infection rates public. And that's only right. Sure. Because if you do have to go into the hospital, you should at least be able to find out which hospital so now in you your can area yeah. has the lowest infection so rate. So now, let's just stop for a moment. So now anyone who's anticipating elective surgery or, or, right. or even mandated uh, surgery. And by the way, I saw at the beginning, you didn't exclude cesarean births. So you're, no. talking, about, you're talking about very common oh, practices. Yes. I, I get tragic yeah. emails from so new the, mothers. So those, those potential hospital patients can literally go online. They yes. Can, and they can find out their the rate of decline or or just or the, rate the rate of period. infection in, the rate in each period, hospital. The rate of and, now and, it won't be available in New York till next May or June. Yeah. I'm told we worked very hard to get that law published in Albany, and uh, that law passed in Albany. And and we've done the same good work in Florida, Pennsylvania, New yeah. Jersey, Connecticut. But in the interim, you can ask, can't states. you? Pardon? In the interim, you can oh, ask. No, no, you can't ask. You cannot. Oh. And you know, Judith, it's the secrecy that allowed this problem to fester so for too long. So you can't even call up and find out. No, they it's, won't tell you. It's their private but secret. That's right. They're but as of next June in New York, they will be public. And in some states, they already are. Florida and Pennsylvania, yeah. for example. So, And that that is a result of your good work. Yes. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Okay. So, and there's a third pressure yeah, yeah, on hospitals. Right. And this is the pressure of lawsuits. Because as long as it was assumed that infections were inevitable, when a patient got an infection, the patient couldn't really win a lawsuit because the jury would be told, this is the risk a patient faces in the hospital. But now the evidence is copious that nearly all these infections are preventable through proper hygiene. And the result is that when patients get infections, they are beginning to sue and win those lawsuits. So hospital infection is the next asbestos. It's the next major cause of class action lawsuits. We want to get to the hospitals and help them prevent this. Prevent that. And right. Which after all... Because a lawsuit is not as good right. as being healthy. Right. Well, for one thing, it's not as good as living. And second of all, these, this kind of litigious nature doesn't help any of us. Right. It drives up the cost. So we'd, we'd okay. like to show so the hospitals how to okay. prevent those infections. Well, you've done good... Well, you've you know, certainly done good work in the fact that you have made hospitals want to pay attention to avoiding them. And That's that right. probably is the biggest obstacle. But now we talked about how people can uh, take take their destiny in their own hands oh, and, and do something about so it. Oh, and this is so important. And I continue to hear you say over and over again, hygiene. But that's pretty basic, Betsy. It is basic. It is basic. And there are things that patients can, can do to substantially reduce their own risk. Of an infection, you can't always avoid going to the hospital, but you can definitely reduce your risk of getting an infection okay, so while you're there. So let's, okay, let's take number them one: off. ask every person who's going to touch you in that hospital for any reason to clean their hands before they do so. Well, I just want to stop you right there. You know, most people are a little intimidated you with medical right. personnel, and I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm pretty streetwise, but I think I, I'm, and people might say brash. Nobody's going to intimidate but, uh, you, but, but you know what? But I might, but I, yeah. Am I supposed to say to a nurse or a technician or, God forbid, a doctor, have you washed your hands? Yes. And, and if you're worried about being too aggressive, just remember, your life is at stake. You're right. Many people get very intimidated. I can understand that. But even the hospitals are encouraging patients and their family members to speak up. They have... Uh, signs in the hospital that now say, speak up, ask your caregiver to clean their hands in front of you. And don't they have these things now that's, uh, that, you can, that you can keep right by your bedside? That's right. Yeah. So keep, keep a dispenser of alcohol-based hand cleaner by your bedside. Ask everyone to use it. Now, there are a couple including of germs. Including your own family and visitors, oh, definitely. right? definitely. And there are a couple of germs that aren't killed by this hand cleaner. We're going to get to that okay. in a moment. But in general, just make sure they clean their hands before touching you, right? Number two, if you know you're going into the hospital, and believe it or not, 90% or so of patients yeah. know they're, they're heading right. to the hospital, yeah, right? Yeah. 
get tested for something called MRSA. It's a simple skin swab test. You can get it done in your doctor's office or at a lab. MRSA. MRSA. Write it down. Yeah. MRSA. It stands for methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. That's a MRSA. That's a mouthful, but it's MRSA or right, MRSA. Right, yeah. This is one of the most dreaded drug resistant bacteria in the hospital. It causes the worst infections. But you can get tested ahead of time to see if you already have it on your skin because it won't make you sick on your skin. But in a hospital, there are too many opportunities for that germ that's on top of your skin to get inside your body. They're gonna give you an IV. Right. They're gonna, you might have a surgical incision, right. 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 a urinary tract catheter, right. a ventilator if you're having trouble breathing. If you know ahead of time that you have this germ, yeah. you can get rid of it before you get to the hospital. Okay. So we, we want to be sure that we get all of our stuff in and we don't right. have to so, okay. for one, so for get tested so for, for sure. For, for right. sure. And then another very important, um, I'm, uh, I saw If you're going to have surgery, yeah. bathe for four days with chlorhexidine yeah. soap. You so can buy it in the drugstore. Chlorhexidine. Store. Right. And I thought, that, I thought it was a very good tip. Don't shave. Yes, this is I thought critically that was important. A, I thought that was don't a really good tip. Don't shave your legs, ladies, before yeah. you go right. to the hospital. Don't shave. Yeah. And when when you're having surgery, say it's on your chest, if you're a man and it's yeah. hairy, or your leg, don't let them shave you before right. they do because the surgery. Because they could be like little nicks or something. That's right. If hair has yeah. to be removed, clippers yeah. should use. Yeah. Ask your surgeon to keep you warm in the operating room. So many operating rooms are very cold, cold very right? Cold. But for many types of surgery, yeah. patients who are kept warm resist yeah. infection better. Okay, so we've given some very, and certainly www.hospitalinfection.org www. www. to get much, to get much more, more. But I also mm -hmm. want to say this too. There are things that you have written about that amaze me, like, um, I wouldn't think of it. You talk about the doctor's stethoscopes. Yes. You know, if you think about it, I'll tell you, you they rub, lean over, well, rub over, Well, they put it on one side. chest after right. another. Right. So ask him to clean it with alcohol. It. The AMA backs us up on that. Please ask your doctor or nurse to clean the stethoscope with And you've with also alcohol. mentioned blood pressure cuffs blood that pressure go from cuffs, place to place. One arm after another. Yeah. Ask them to clean it before they put it on your arm. Right. It's a simple thing to right. do. And then lastly, you've gotten a lot of attention as, as a with hospitals with orderly scrubs. Yes, you'll see doctors and nurses and lab technicians wearing their white coats or their scrubs out of the hospital into going local into, restaurants. Yeah, going into restaurants. Or going home. And whether they're going into a restaurant and endangering your health or going home, home. and unfortunately bringing yeah. those drug-resistant bacteria into the house for their children to be oh, exposed oh. to. Yeah. They should not be doing that. You know, that. this the uh, what get what what come from this, and I, I, I thank you for being on this show, and is that these are very common household kind of tips that all of us, none of us would pick up anything off the floor and start eating it, or or let a kid pick up anything off That's the street. Right. So it, it's uh, these are very common kinds of things. I am to urging really, hospitals in right, New York City to, really to take more responsibility for what their employees do. Right? Exactly. And to and prevent them from wearing right. these uniforms out and of the building. And also, we, you are urging, and this show is urging, uh, potential hospital patients to take responsibility for their own health and really their life when they're in the hospital. We want to be right, helpful. Right. The website is www.hospitalinfection.org. Yes. And the founder is Dr. Betsy McCoy. Thanks. You really are doing a good job for Thank America. You. <laughs> right. Nice to be on the show. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I'm Judith West, host of Getting Your Money's Worth. Thank you.